Cleanse the uh, the palate before trying this bad boy here. I'm pretty excited for this. Yeah. You guys pre sip didn't you? Rat bastards. What, the liqueur stuff? What do you mean pre Oh, did you try the drink yet? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm well, saving it for the pod, baby. It's oh, all content. Okay, all right. It's all content. Well, we didn't all make the... Uh, <laughs> we're talking the gold same, content here, Jay. We didn't all make the same drink, so we're kind of on the quest to find the uh, perfect Dangerville signature cocktail right yes, now. Yes, this so. is the... This is the task at hand today. We just bought fucking a whole shitload of weird ass <laughs> liqueurs and shit. Mike's here with us. He brought in some crazy shit, some fucking vial of green magic potion. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck Ma- is that? Made by the French monks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. In like some old monastery. They don't have t- they don't have electricity, but they make this liqueur. Nice. Yeah, the that's the life. Juice. Dude, maybe they really do got it figured out. Yeah. Well, they they just decided they're not going to make any more. They're like, we're going to make the bare minimum that the world needs. And no more than that. Wow, we got Jesus stuff to do or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I knew there were French monks, which doesn't uh, speak very highly of oh, yeah, monk man. knowledge. They made uh, champagne, all that, dude. Really? Yeah. Bring my balls or anything? No, no, no. This is real thing. I'm drinking the stars, the famous fucking. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Oh wow! They got- the, the, the monks' alcohol came from like beer and all that was all pioneered by by monks. Yeah, hey, I guess French. I knew they were French monks. Who am I kidding? They had nothing else to do. They weren't. Indeed. They had a now silence me. and celibacy. So <laughs> jacking off and making uh, green chartreuse yeah. all the time, dude. Is that what that was? Green chartreuse? Yeah, it's, okay, it's weird. So, all right, let's go through. What did you make? All what right, did you so make? this is Grand Marnier, probably eh, well, three quarters of an ounce or so, and then about an ounce and a half of whiskey. Which whiskey it. did you go uh, with? I think one with the blackened. I hope okay, I remember yeah. to put whiskey in here. Otherwise, this is going to be unfortunate. Some cardamom bitters. Yep. And then uh, a little three quarters of an ounce of Campari. Okay. So yeah. This oil here. The Campari is kind of a lot. I feel like that that's kind of not my favorite. I like it in like the Boulevardier and whatever when it's like that's yeah. kind of the thing. But like with this kind of, I feel like it's not really... Yeah, so this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have forgot to put whiskey in I might in have, it, dude. yeah, I might have. <laughs> Actually, might have to be Go up in the fridge, here, yeah. get that rosemary simple syrup, and it. put a couple and spoonfuls a little, in there. Uh, a little jigger in here. Jesus Christ, can't even Feel make free a to talk amongst cocktail. yourself, gentlemen. <laughs> I think I did put it in there, but, yeah, no. Not, not good. <laughs> I made, I used that blackened whiskey. Because it was open. Shout out to Shane. Thank you for the blackened. Um, the cardamom bitters, the cherry. So I've been trying to just find what's the like next. I just want one smug liqueur ingredient to go in it as well. So that's the quest. So basically, the drink to me is like rye whiskey or whatever whiskey we got, the cardamom bitters, a cherry, uh, and ginger beer. That's like pretty much what we always drink. So I'm trying to find like, all right, so what? So we bought fucking Contrao or Contrao or whatever the fuck you say. Yeah, whatever. It. Yeah. <laughs> so I got I put some of that in there and some of the Grand, is it Grand Mariner or Grand Marinier? Or it's like Grand Manier. Manier. I think so. Okay. That's how I always heard it said. Gotcha. That's so, how the French monks pronounce it. <laughs> so that's what I made. And it's pretty goddamn good. But the uh, the the Campari's little a little too much. It's I went heavy strong. on the Campari. Yeah. yeah, that was a miss. That was a miss on yeah. my part. It's a rookie it's a little mistake. strong. Campari is uh, it, a little goes a long way. Yeah, seriously. You get a little stickle on this one over here. It's got so that's got the ginger beer in it too. I think that Grand Manier is is the move though. With the it's pretty solid. Mm-hmm. That's a cut above my. Uh, yeah, my I would do it without the definitely without the Campari again oh. though. So. Our cat's freaking out here. This cat's going ham on the food time. Yeah, so. that'll happen. <laughs> so, all right, so that's whiskey number one. What'd you make there, Mike? I got. A, I went with my old faithful uh, concoction of a riff on an old fashioned. I've got the new riff rye and some of the Quantrao or whatever, mm-hmm. and um, some cardamom bitters and a little bit of that rosemary simple syrup. That's oh, you got that off. And it's fantastic. Nice. So, okay. Well played, sir. I know what I'm doing. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> I gotta say, rise the way to go, man. Give me yeah. some rye over bourbon. Oh, yeah, rye are dude. definitely kind of the, the go-to, the rye. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I think uh, 
Hey, if you guys want to try it, have a sip. I'm not afraid of your germs. You're not going to kill me. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know what I was doing with that mix. That is... It's <laughs> undrinkable. It's undrinkable. <laughs> I mean, go big or go home, you know? Yeah, sometimes you got to go for it. <laughs> I think that Campari is too much, dude. I think that's... Pretty solid. Pretty solid. All right, this has that rosemary. Simple yeah, simple. yeah, I don't really get the rosemary, but it's just... I needed some extra sweetness in there. Woo! It's strong. Oh, yeah, that's how I mix them. It's a face melter right there, baby. <laughs> yeah. Which you gotta have. I always go a little heavy handed on the uh Oh yeah. On the whiskey. I yeah. It's gotta be done. Yeah, I definitely prefer a strong I like the, it just tastes better, but the problem is you get all fucking hammered. Wow, that's <laughs> that's true. <laughs> usually it doesn't matter because I'm at home. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going anywhere. Yeah, we fucking I usually have two drinks before we even start the show. I opted just for one because I knew we were gonna be getting into it. <laughs> oh, I did not. I'm already uh <laughs> Are you a little buzzed up here? Yeah, it's I'm a little buzzed up too. That fucking drink we had at the spot was fucking. Yeah, you got that yeah. uh, that dirty, the dirty cowboy. cowboy. <laughs> There's nothing I like more than a dirty the cowboy in my mouth. Cocktails to be sure. <laughs> All right, we should just get fucking right into it, boys. Let's right. talk about the greatest movie ever made by humans: Ambulance by Michael Bay. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. starring. Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> and some other dude I don't know. Uh, it That's, was he's the new uh, he's the new fucking Morpheus. In the, uh, oh, I the, thought he was a terrible installment yeah. of uh, the That's Matrix. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's in a lot of other stuff. But he's also gotta... in an episode of Black Mirror. If you guys are Black Mirror guys, uh, is that the yeah. one where the two guys play video games and start fucking? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Though. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A, guys. So I fucking, I was, I don't know what the hell I was fucking high as shit. And uh, I started watching, I watched this movie called Wrath of Man, which is the new, uh, new movie from Guy Ritchie with, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. With the fucking, uh, that guy he always uses, Jason Statham. And uh, it's like a fucking, it's actually about robbing armored cars. This is what we were talking about right, last right. week. Or, uh, it was pretty good. It was all right. It was yeah. fun. It, I, I'd definitely check it out if you're in the mood for something. Was that the first movie Guy Ritchie's directed or am I way off? No, no, no. This like... is his new movie. Okay. New okay. Guy Ritchie's new movie. So uh, it, it just came out like last year or something. So okay. it's like brand new. Uh, it was pretty good. right? And I'm just kind of like in the action fucking whatever and it's kind of late and i'm like but i don't really want to go to bed so i'm just gonna throw something else on and fucking prime serves up to me it just recommends ambulance (laughs) and i was just like ah inappropriate and i i threw it on and like no joke is as terrible and amazing as this movie was i was literally on the edge of my seat till like (laughs) one in the morning just going oh yes just like soaking it in that was i stayed up way too late watching this shit i'd fucking i think i'd take some edibles or something (laughs) and i was just i was literally i was laughing so hard that susan had to come out and yell at me to shut the fuck up (laughs) because i was just like michael bay putting asses in the seat (laughs) so yeah it's i I truly feel like it's the greatest movie that human beings have ever made (laughs) Jesus Christ. It's so preposterous. The action's so ridiculous. It starts out, if you remember, like, it just... The dude, they're like brothers. It's a black dude and a white guy, and they grew up together, and they're like brothers, and, like, the dude just needs a loan. And he's, it just happens so fast, first of all. Yeah. He shows up at the dude's thing <laughs> at his spot where he's got all those cars or whatever, and he's just like, yeah, and by the way, we're robbing a bank today. Get in. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> it's just like, and he's got all these homies with him. He's got his whole crew, right? His whole bank robbing yeah, crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jill and all is all smug and sexy and shit. And he fucking, <laughs> he's just like, all right, get in. And they roll to the bank and this fucking bank robbery. It's like, and this is like the first five minutes. It's like the most intense action <laughs> bank robbery ever shot. <laughs> the greatest part about it, about that part was that all of his homies just fucking die. Oh it, yeah, it you never like, see him again. You never see him spoiler again. Like, you thought, spoiler oh, this alert. is all going to be spoiler alerts. <laughs> I'm going all in on this plot. So if you've not seen this terrible movie and you really care about the plot, spoiler alert. Air quotes plot. <laughs> yeah, plot. 
And so, like, but it was, like, he, he kind of sets up all these characters. Like, there's, like, the nerdy guy and, the, you know, like, your kind of classic, like, bank robber fucking crew or whatever. Oh, yeah. And you got your meathead <laughs> fucking yeah, bald yeah. guy with the yep. goatee. You got yeah, your... the bearded dude. The fucking dude they're breaking his balls about wearing sandals to it, which is hilarious. Unnecessarily angry for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Why can't the they just angry be like stoner guy. Why can't they just yeah. be, like, a normal bank yeah. robber? <laughs> like, hey, guys, what's going on? Uh, well, that was actually kind of what to... Jake Gyllenhaal was. That was kind of his character. He's like, yeah, I'm not some hard ass we're just robbing a bank yeah which was kind of <laughs> hilarious but they all die brutally which was fucking hilarious as fuck the one dude gets run over and they pull him out and he's his guts are all hanging out and shit <laughs> the Birkenstocks <laughs> he goes, uh, he shouldn't have wore those Birkenstocks <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love when their whole plan falls apart because they're like all right we're gonna get out of here oh fuck that cop that we saw earlier who was waiting for his partner that we kidnapped yeah. is still oh, there yeah, yeah. Well, that was the whole thing he comes in to hit on that girl or whatever remember that he, the cop the yeah. setup was the cop came back to the bank because he wanted to ask out the teller yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, actually we gotta we gotta back up because um Michael Bay makes movies in which Michael Bay is a famous director where everyone knows his movies. Yeah, he quoted yeah. The Rock yes, he in did. his own which more was, than once. Which was choice. <laughs> that was so good. I loved everything about it. He goes, winners go home and fuck the prom queen. <laughs> and then when he's, the Rock. He finds his partner's shot. He's, you're going to fuck the prom queen. <laughs> He goes, the other kid goes, he's referencing like how old it is or whatever. Because he goes, The Rock, yeah, he's a great actor. Used to be a wrestler or whatever. Like that shit was legit funny though, you know. Like it was, I thought anyway. But that movie is he was making. He's like, well, I've, I made I made the heist movie in the prison, and I made the heist movie on the plane, yeah. and I made the heist movie here. Yeah. What if I made the heist movie in an ambulance, dude? Yeah, like I would yeah, do yeah, the dude. rock in an ambulance. Just <laughs> every form of transportation imaginable, <laughs> dude. Oh man, it was so good. The upcoming Michael Bay <laughs> e-bike heist movie I'm pretty stoked for. <laughs> Should be pretty rad, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, man. So, like, all that happens, and, like, before they even, like, get to the ambulance, it's like, all that shit <laughs> goes down. And then, so, and then, yeah, they, they shoot him and the cop getting a fist fight, and the dude, like, shoots the cop or whatever. <laughs> That's the whole setup. And so they get the plot. There's some girl who's not the girl from Ninja Turtles, but it's still the girl from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Plays the ambulance driver or whatever. Like, that's all set up. Yeah, yeah. And they fucking throw this cop in the back. I'm trying to remember it. I was pretty wasted when I was watching it. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, the, the thing is, they got this cop who's dying in the ambulance. They take over the ambulance. It's Gyllenhaal and Morpheus. <laughs> and fucking... The, he shot the cop. So it's Morpheus shot the cop. Yeah. And so he feels all guilty about it and right, shit. Right, right. So they're Real trying to... Real gold on that Morpheus. <laughs> yeah. Thing, by the way. Well, you gotta, you gotta understand Michael Bay's worldview is vets and... and you know, line level soldiers right, are right. the real heroes. They're always the good guy. Mm -hmm. Cops are always the good guy and cannot be killed. And but all their bosses are the bad guys and the feds. Did you notice how the, when they when they yeah. introduced the fed? Yeah, he's a gay dude and he's in couples therapy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Which was, and that was that was a statement by Michael Bay of what I think about the feds. Yeah. Right, Which, but right. that was a fucking funny scene too, dude. Because he goes, he's just breaking his son's balls or whatever. You remember? He's just like, yeah. Why am I here? He's like, I am the uh, head of the FBI task force or whatever. And then, he, <laughs> <laughs> and he just leaves oh mid therapy. He gets that. He gets that text like, "There's been a bank robbery in downtown LA." He's just, All right, I gotta go. <laughs> oh no, when I went into that. I was like, okay, this guy's this guy's a vet that's down on his luck. He lives to the end. <laughs> yeah, like for sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, no yeah, doubt yeah. about he's that. He's a hero. Yep, yep, yep. Nothing bad happens to him. Did he? Did he live? Yeah, he did. He does live. He does live. Well, I like the motivation Jake Gyllenhaal is giving him the whole time too. He's like, "You shot a cop. This cop uh, dies. Yeah, you're going, you're going to prison to jail, for life. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah. in death." He's like, as if the armed bank robbery dollars. is. Yeah, 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 not that much of a concern. We'll be just fine if we can prevent this one yep. fucking but cop. Who death. you <laughs> shot? The fucking uh, the amount of cars that get crashed in this movie is just, and they actually call it out in the movie. They make some joke about like, "Yeah, it's a really expensive." Of, uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of cars are crashing here or something like that. I, was, I loved when the whole thing with when they're coming out of the bank and those SWAT team guys come up and start killing everybody. Like, 
it wasn't really clear that they were actually SWAT team. Uh, yeah, I thought, right, I, right, I thought it was yeah. some other gang. I thought it was yeah. some other crew that <laughs> was, was going to really, jack right. them off of the jack. Yeah, because well, yeah. they called the boss. But yeah. they don't say who the boss is. His dog's the size of his fucking car. Yeah. 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 There's that whole plot. That, that guy, that said Volkswagen just, Beetle, dude. Yeah. Stop the chase. Or yeah, stop yeah. the chase. The dog's <laughs> in the car. That was super funny, too. Like, that was actually, to me, like, really clever writing. Really you know? Who let my dog? Is that my dog? <laughs> He's in the, it was pure Michael Bay gold, this dude. Great. Back off, back off. We're giving him space. His dogs in the back of the car, but they never really went anywhere else with that, though. Either like no. the dog never showed up again or anything. And then uh, later on to follow through, <laughs> fucking about that guy's plot. That that head of the task force dude who was pretty fucking funny. He like gets killed, right? But yeah, the police like, chief. Yeah, the, the police, police chief, chief oh, yeah, yeah. killed. And then the FBI guys in charge. They, yeah, it was that was yeah, weird. Yeah, that motherfucker yeah. for sure. It, it it was a little all over the place. Yeah, but because they fucking he they pull this the whole plot is they, Gyllenhaal calls his homies and the Mexican cartels that are like the L.A. street Mexican gangs with the cars and the Chicano and the yeah, the tats yeah, and all that. And they have this fucking car they've been working on that has a gigantic fucking like 30 caliber machine gun or whatever. He went breaking bad with the automated machine gun car. Oh it fucking pops up and it, they remote control it in toward the cops. But I thought I was like, oh, this thing's got to be full of blanks. This is just a distraction. But, a, oh, but no, apparently so. not. Like they They're just mowed waste, down baby. all those cops and oh, yeah. shit, dude. Yeah. But did they actually yet kill anybody <laughs> other than the police chief? Yeah, I know. I that was, think what was weird. I was like, okay, he gets killed. I'm like, I don't understand what's happening. The preposterousness, <laughs> if that's a word, and if not, I'm making it one, of like the entire movie is centered around saving this one cop. <laughs> yeah. While yeah. then subsequently bringing in an automated 50 cal Gatling yeah. gun. To murder every Many other cop cops. Uh -huh. in several <laughs> states across. They're all crashing their cars. They all fly off the edge of that cliff <laughs> yeah, and everything. Yeah. And this is like... I, Michael yeah, Bay somehow, movies are just... It's, he has an idea. He's like, this would look fucking cool. And it and then, does. And then the next thing, he's like, this would look fucking cool. So I was like, how does that fit together? I don't care. It looks fucking cool. Yeah. It, and it does. He All those drone shots and everything. Yeah. He's like... It, like in, in all fairness, like jokes aside, like... His directing is honestly amazing. Like the fucking, it's so fast. There's so many cuts. Like, how long does it take to shoot that stuff? And like all those fucking, he's using all those drone shots, like crazy fucking drone shots and shit. Now going through buildings and like flipping around in front of cars and shit. And it's the like, excitement in your eyes right now. You, <laughs> Dude, you look I like a young this movie. dickhead haircut of Ross right now. I'm picturing seventh grade Ross. Oh, I loved this movie more than any fuck. movie I've loved in a long fucking I'm, time. I'm I'm gonna let you burn burn your uh, burn yourself out of steam here before I jump into my <laughs> huge opinions here. So you know, feel I will free say to this. continue. It was a little light on explosions. For yeah, Michael yeah. Bay film. it was. It was. There was uh, a lot of car crashes, of car but car not chase. a lot of shit yeah. blowing up. Yep. yep. But my my favorite part of the whole movie, though, the part that I started laughing my ass off was they fucking have to do emergency surgery yeah. on the cop yeah, the in the zoom ambulance. Call. So it's yeah, it's <laughs> on a zoom, she calls her ex-boyfriend who then calls two surgeons on the golf course, which was yeah. hilarious. Yeah. They fucking that one guy shanks his shot. This guy's like, I'm having the best round uh, of my yeah. life right now. He's like, hey man, we got an emergency fuck he like shanks <laughs> that shot. It's super funny. <laughs> and so they fucking she they're walking her through taking this guy's spleen out and they're all in she's all in she's fucking all like elbow deep in this guy's guts and she they're like you have to take the spleen out of him physically out, out of, of his him to body, take the bro. take the bullet out yeah to take the bullet out so she pulls it and she's like he's like whatever you do this if the spleen ruptures you can't fucking let the split if you if it ruptures and I'm like I'm just thinking like oh there's no, she's gonna pull this off and then the spleen ruptures oh, yeah. and it just explodes <laughs> and that's where I lost it dude I was just like oh but oh. thankfully, gentlemen, thankfully she yep. had a hair clip. And then they yeah. fix it with her hair clip. Which is apparently like a Zoom call and a hair clip <laughs> is all you need to be a surgeon. Like, I, fuck any cuck out there <laughs> spending eight years and 200 grand on medical school. I love you that. You got to hop on Zoom and fucking hit up, uh, hit up Alta. <laughs> 
Give yourself a... Two hours uh, later, that fucking guy wakes up. And he's like, wow, did you have your hands in my stomach? Yeah. That was crazy. And he's like, hi. Because like, uh, well, like, you she just goes, wake up two yeah. hours after it. She goes, search. yeah, I was, I was really in there. Like, yeah, but he, he's really fully funny. cognizant, fully aware, yeah, fully exactly. alert. Is, like, hey, is the, the hair clip still in now. there? That's what I didn't understand. Like, they fix it with the hair clip, but it's never, like, explained. Like, is it just... Did they sew it up? Oh, they sewed him up. Bro. With the hair clip they in there? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Without question. Without question. <laughs> It makes no oh sense. God. All right. I can bite my tongue no more. <laughs> so I saw this movie pop up on my Netflix last year when it first came out. And I'm a huge Gyllenhaal fanboy, as you know, probably. Yeah, he's like Big your guy. He's probably he's your like, guy. Jake Gyllenhaal my guy. So I'm like, show it's Jake Gyllenhaal. And then I see directed by Michael Bay. And I'm like, that's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Bay is not good at making movies. And I want to be ultra clear here. I'm not doing the contrarian thing. Michael Bay stinks at an alarming rate. You don't gentlemen. like The Rock? There is n- well, The Rock's shows. That's a there, Michael no, Bay movie. What are you talking about? That's, that's, right. <laughs> that's a great movie. He's got one redeeming movie. And this Ambulance movie was the most preposterously <laughs> bad know. movie. What I, I was know. actually hoping for, so the movie starts with like a five minute ish or three minute ish opening sequence of utter cheese. And I'm like, all right, I can get down with this. You know, it's them as fucking kids playing yeah, out in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yep. but fucking brothers from My the back, you know, it stinks. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I can get down with this. Then to your point, it's immediately into the bank. I'm just like, it's like, hey, we're out robbing a bank. Yeah. So this, oh, like, they're going to heist 50 million or whatever. Yeah. This ill-conceived plan with this new brother coming in out of left field. It's like, grab a gun. We'll, uh, we'll figure it out on the fly here. It'll all be fine. Right. Yeah. That's why it's... And the, then it's just two it's just, hours. Yeah, just explosions and car chases and no plot. It Not makes no only sense. are Michael Bay movies bad, they're also exceedingly long. It was, it was long. I'm like not going to lie. It was long, dude. 15 minutes. I was like, this needs to wrap up. Oh, already. my God, dude. The <laughs> whole time I'm sitting there, I don't even have Amazon. So <laughs> I spent $4 in two and a half <laughs> no, hours of my oh, life. Yeah, neither of every, which I'm going to get back. Literally, I'm sitting set, there dude. going, God damn you, Rossi, motherfucker. Dude, I love this movie hours, so you... much, dude. It was so entertaining. Oh, it was I so have crying, so I laughed my ass off. <laughs> the too, whole man. thing, I enjoyed it. Here's, here's the thing I realized watching it, too, that I realized about Michael Bay, is Michael Bay is James Cameron without any story Talent. ideas, yeah. but a whole yeah. lot or of vision cocaine. Taste. Uh, <laughs> you know? uh, he, he's got vision. It's just, let's make the fucking craziest, fastest pace action movie whole ever A lot made. of cocaine. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of parallels. That's a pretty huge call. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, James Cameron without the, like, integrity, <laughs> <Yeah>. basically. <It's, laughs> I was kind of like, I was loving it so much. I was so fun. I was like, I'm just, I'm respecting every bit of this and just being like, I'm going to make the craziest, dumbest movie ever made. <laughs> it's two guys in an ambulance. They, you know, like. He's uh, an entertainer. It's a, It was <laughs> highly entertaining, dude. But yeah, it was so bad. That's why it's so good, too. It's it so wasn't bad. even so bad. It's good. That's what I was hoping for. No, I thought, case so, scenario, I thought like, that's what it was for This is for so sure. bad. I was just like, oh, this is grueling. So I am going to need that four bucks back. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> you, you, were, <laughs> you were not <laughs> fucked up enough. I think that was the key, too, dude. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I was laughing so fucking hard watching that movie. What else happens though? There was there was something else that I thought was like fucking disc. Well, the end. I gotta say the ending was pretty weak. I was hoping that I was kind of hoping they were gonna get away. Myself, I was kind of like, I hope they just like somehow just get away with this. That yeah, be- yeah, indeed. And they, the ending got lame where they got like. At the very end, they finally get caught and the fucking the dude. Yeah. Spoiler alert! Who but- shot you? He's yeah, pointing back and I forth know. between Jill and Hall and fucking Morpheus and Morpheus points at Morpheus. Jill and goes, he has to kill his own brother. At this the guy end. saved me. Yeah, this guy saved my life. Ugh. It's like he shot you though, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, literally, yeah, dude. he literally shot you. Right. Yeah. It was Morpheus. Oh, uh, Jill and Hall was kind of the good guy Ugh. as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he's so handsome, you can't fucking, you know, like, he should just be let He's go. a real good-looking man, dude. That's a jawline you can set here's, your watch. Here's a couple gentlemen. things. When they're first in the ambulance, and they get settled in, and then suddenly, he's like, pointing, he's got the gun in her face, he's like, fix the cop, fix the cop, fix the cop, and then after a little bit, everything calls out, 
So, uh, you come here often? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, which is, it's super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I spoiled a gun. Yeah, that's uh, crazy, really trying right? to pull some <laughs> tail for sure, dude. It's like, oh, things got a little weird He gets back all there, pissed but... that uh, she hits him with the fucking uh, fire extinguisher, and he's like, this is Versace or some shit like that. <laughs> this is cashmere. Yeah, it's cashmere. What the fuck? Oh, my God. Yeah. And then immediately, 30 seconds later, he quickly dusts yeah, it, it off, and it's 100% it dry. Perfectly yeah, clean. <laughs> He was the a best dry cleaner dogs. in the world can't fucking <laughs> match the, the left hand brushing of Gyllenhaal when it comes to cleaning a fine cashmere sweater, dude. It was oh so good. I, but they never wrapped up a... The co- I thought the cop was gonna like I was expecting to see that teller like be there waiting for that cop or something. <laughs> like they never wrap that up. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they yeah. never. You think that the because uh, ambulance She's like, you're not chick, my type. Indeed, <laughs> indeed. She's like, I don't like cops. Ew. <laughs> the fucking ambulance chick. It, it starts out where she's on call with uh, some new rookie. There's some rookie ambulance guy. And they never really, like, wrapped that up either. He kind of shows up at the end, but, like, it was like he was, like, asking her out and shit, but, like, they, they fucking hooking up or what's going on. They never really, yeah. like, wrapped that plot up. She goes back and visits the little girl from the beginning, if you remember. Which is I didn't just, even remember who that little girl was. I was either, like, what right? the hell I was is like, the context? What is this? <laughs> I know. I could not. Re- it, it actually, it worked so much better when she was just like, yeah, fuck that. It's just a meat wagon, which is what she did at the beginning. And then she had to get in touch with the feelings at the end. It was yeah, like, exactly. no, this worked way better if you just want to let that go. Well, that was the whole opening scene set up for the rookie ambulance yeah, driver yeah. was like, oh, they're saying oh, it's yeah. a real shit show in there or whatever. Yep. And that Some girl girls got like in rebar <laughs> sticking through the middle of her chest. It's like a piece of fish. Which she inexplicably survives, by the way. It's yeah. a seven-year-old <laughs> child. This thing is three quarters the mass of her entire body you weight. You have to be brave. Directly through the center of her torso. <laughs> She's fine, yeah. <laughs> And the ambulance driver, by the way, like, step your game up, son. You're fucking, you're an ambulance driver. Like, what do you expect to see? Like, first day, the, man. The He's needless, rookie. He's a rookie. like, I'm shocked He's by the, the tragedy that has befallen these people that I've got to see for the first time. Like, what do you think you're signing up for there? Yeah, well. That, well, that was that was piece, why it worked because that's what she said. She was basically just like he was like, "Oh, you were so great with them back there." She's like, "I don't even want to talk about them. Uh, all I do is drop them off and and I'm out." And I was like, "It's a great burrito place down that, the road." Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, says. yeah, yeah. And then they're eating sushi, by the way, which got very confusing. <laughs> you know where that Michael was? Michael Boy, uh, big no, no, no. Plop. You know where that was? They were at the downtown L.A. market. Which has all that shit. Yeah, okay. Which okay. and I know that because I've been there, and they actually shot that in there. And I was like, "Oh, that's actually that spot. That's pretty cool." Indeed. In, <laughs> in conclusion, conclusion. <laughs> what was that? oh, I was going for these things. I pre-listened to them. There we go. Michael Bay is the greatest director <laughs> of our time. Wait, you Ambulance. know, I think we just we just glossed over the sing along. The sing. Oh they're, yeah, they're cruising oh, and then he, they yeah. put in the earbud oh, yeah, and yeah, they yeah, start. Yeah. I don't even know the song they're I didn't singing, know that song but, but they just start yeah. singing and then he's just. No, this isn't working. That, for was, that was also <laughs> hilarious. It was, there was some pretty funny writing I thought in there. Just like it was pretty like making fun of itself, like you know, calling back yeah. his own movies and shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna allow everything about it. So, ambulance five out of five stars, six out of five stars from director Michael Bay, <laughs> the finest film ever made. Gentlemen, soak it in. Let's get another drink. I can't overstate how terrible this drink is. Make, make a different one. I thought we, that's what we just... There's starving children in Somalia that would kill for a lackluster uh, cocktail. That ex- as expensive as that fucking... All that shit is. That that's Campari the other thing and all too, that yeah. shit. So I, I just made drink number two here. I skipped the... Uh, so this one's the rye. And it's got the, uh, the cherry, the cardamom bitters, the grand... Marinier. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and the ginger beer. And I think this is going to be the one right here. So what did you put in this one that you didn't put in the last one? No, Sounds I put pretty- I didn't put the Campari in this uh, one, which I did yeah, put in. Okay. All right, try okay. that. Try that. Yeah, this is looking promising. It's here. rock solid. Talking about Grand Marinier when it was merely a whisper. <laughs> Ooh, pretty good, huh? That's the game winner so and far. Try that right one. There. Yeah, this is what I'm. This is what I'm trying to come with that signature cocktail. Yeah, it's solid. It's a solid mix. Solid mix. 
So too much should it just be like a splash of ginger beer. You know? I think like, so. Maybe a little overkill on yeah, the ginger beer. Yeah, indeed. Starting to dial it in though. Starting to hone mm-hmm. in on the uh, on indeed. the game winner. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, you play around di- different ginger beers. Get something a little spicier right, or whatever. Right, right. Get away from the diet and the uh, fake sugar taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's just so goddamn sugary though. They got that shit that's made with agave or whatever. I had that one before. It's like an agave ginger beer. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. It's pretty decent. I'll have to look for that. Yeah. Um, so you guys catch the new Foo Fighters yet? Can we talk about the fucking new Foo Fighters a little bit? Yes, dude. You listen to that, Mike? Yes. You listen to it? I couldn't remember if you did it's or fantastic. not. fantastic. Yeah. I've been bumping it pretty steady. Pretty steady. Pretty big fan. I really like that fucking hearing voices song or something like that it's like track three yeah it's a banger, like dude. it's a fucking great song yeah really nailed it on the head man it's kind of the perfect mix of like fun and digestible but still like old school it felt very original yeah like og yeah. color in the shade yeah i know that's first a, foo fighters album yeah everybody's like, like kind of raw but back still to awesome like, and digestible dude huge huge fan of it yeah it's definitely the best thing they've done in literally sense of color and shape i feel like which yeah. is which is huge it really needed to happen like could you imagine if they came with a new record and it just sucked yeah you know <laughs> after, like the last after, five they put out preceding that yeah one. after all this you know you're just kind of like uh that kind of been the end they come out with the ambulance of new albums <laughs> after all this wait <laughs> noah's show us a huge fan of the girl throwing it back down in the kid girl getting I back think that's part of it i gotta admit screamy vocals a little bit i mean yeah the one's the last time he played drums was the last time they made a yeah, good record. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you indeed, know, dude. it's like uh, there might be something to that. Taylor you Hawkins know? is choice, obviously. Yeah, to take anything away from him, but it's just a lot of old school fucking sixteenth notes on the yeah, hi hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of a classic <laughs> roll that sixteenth note. Throwing it down, dude. just beating the shit out of those drums. Yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. and that's why I was, everybody was a huge fan of Dave Grohl's because he was such a great drummer, and it's kind of like that yeah. really was a lot of the magic. I mean, he fired his other drummer to play drums on that one record you know like <laughs> yeah it's like fuck dude you know like laid waste on that shit it was a yeah. huge fan of it expected it to be good based on your recommendation but man was i thrilled to hear that shit dude. yeah just getting back to basics on that shit so yeah i hope he plays drums on all any more records they do i hope he plays the drums yeah. on which i would have kind of imagined that he will and then just get some josh trained Freeze. monkey to do the exact same thing well that's live, josh Freeze. No fucking, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, quite get literally some freeze you know? in there <laughs> freezing who's one of my favorite drummers ever yeah. i you know i like his playing more than taylor hawkins playing too for that matter I mean, yeah, but agreed and not and again i love taylor hawkins too you know but josh freeze has been one of my favorite drummers forever yeah. even since he was before he was in a perfect circle right, i was right. a fan of josh freeze you know and then with being in a perfect circle i mean that and then since then he's done so much you know but nine inch nails of course i saw him with nine inch nails twice i think i wish he still played with nine inch nails you know because yeah he's just such a great fucking drummer but yeah if it ain't broke don't fix it baby just keep yeah. roll on the kit for the fucking studio albums and just get somebody to lay that exact same shit down yep. man it just got back to basics it dude. really did fun kept it moving the couple ballads on there were both choice i'm oh, not yeah. a big yeah, ballad yeah. guy generally speaking but i thought they were both fucking huge tunes i like ballads until it's the whole record and that's kind of what has become some things sometimes like the fuck was I just talking? Oh, that Dave, Dave Matthews, Matthews yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which I was gonna load that up, but based on the lackluster, uh, yeah, you should listen. You should give it a spin. I'll, I'll give it a spin. spin. Let Dave put it in you one time. Dude. Let the record, <laughs> sh- <laughs> let the record state that I'm not excited to do so. But out of due diligence, I will grind through another. It's no ambulance fucking. by Michael Bay, but I mean, you know, it's all right. It's still worth catching, dude. This fucking drink I made is the ambulance. Of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Swanson to fucking watch some ambulance. Digestible. Ugh, we don't need to get anybody <laughs> watching that shit, dude. Uh, yeah. So anyway, in conclusion, new Foo Fighters is fucking fantastic. Uh, Speaking of long done. movies and James Cameron, did you see the fucking new Avatar flick is now on Max? Oh, finally! I've been yeah, I've been waiting for it. Pretty thrilled for that. It was yeah. a huge fan of that first. I tried Avatar renting it uh, the other night on fucking Prime, and you could only quote unquote buy it. I hate that. Yeah, I'm not paying twenty. 20- 
bucks for your digital copy or whatever. Yeah, Fuck yeah. right off, dude. Like, Suck at Amazon. Yeah, no. But I, I did want to watch that. I saw it in IMAX 3D. Did you? Did you? Fucking unbelievable. No spoilers. It was a badass. Oh, it was so good. Yeah. yeah it's about Blue Rabbit's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember, you remember that Smurfs, shit? Smurfs. Uh, what was the fucking? Dances with Smurfs. Dances with yeah. Smurfs, yeah. Do you remember the fucking Blue Rabbit's fucking? You guys remember that skit? <laughs> no. It's from a... Fuck, what's that fucking Seth Green animated fucking oh, robot chicken. It's, chicken. it's a robot. It's one of the most famous robot chicken skits there is, is this fucking song. It's so good. They do this song is Blue Rabbit's fucking about fucking. <laughs> and it is. Oh, oh man. It's you, if you haven't seen Blue Rabbit's fucking or whatever, it's so fucking <laughs> funny, dude. It. Three and a half hours. Damn. Yeah, and that's just was, number three is coming too, or whatever. They shot them both. Yeah, at the they same shot time. them back to back. Yeah. They went. Uh, I mean, you guys, the you guys missed it. out not seeing an IMAX 3D. Yeah, 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 James yeah, Cameron. Yeah. I saw the first one in IMAX 3D. It was fucking unbelievable. It was like the first 3D movie I saw where I'm like, okay, yeah, 3D makes yeah, sense yeah, now yeah. for this. The like, first one was incredible. It. In, in yeah. that shit. We it caught was that so first good. one. I want to say yeah. on Christmas Day, possibly with yeah. my brother. I think we all went. Yeah, 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 yeah. standard theater, not yeah. IMAX. But yeah, if you're ever gonna, throw I saw it, it in IMAX, IMAX 3D and to shit go. too. I think I saw that a couple times in the theater, which is it was that's a definitely worth. I mean, talk about another one. It's like the plot to that movie was not sensational. You know right, what I mean? Right. But like the visuals were so good that it doesn't matter. I loved it. He loved every second of that first one. Super fucking pumped to see the scene. Yeah. He's, he's no Michael Bay, but he's all right. You know, <laughs> like that's what I've always thought about it. You know, it would have been better if it was Shia LaBeouf starring. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then to round out the new entertainment of the uh, the week and month here, did either of you guys happen to catch the Idol, the new uh, HBO joint with no, your boy, with the, the week, the, yeah. your boy? Hey, it's Abel. Abel Tesfaye. Abel Tesfaye. He's dropped me. the weekend moniker apparently or is dropping it or something All right. no i have not seen it but they were they were playing ads for it at the concert remember i was talking about it oh yeah they're yeah, uh, yeah. they like yeah there's some new hbo show coming up yeah and johnny depp's daughter i will <laughs> i'll save my deep dive into this you should definitely catch us we'll yeah. talk about it next week i have a real hard time i have no idea if Lily Rose Depp is the most gorgeous woman I've ever seen or wildly unattractive, I have no idea. Isn't that kind of the case with her dad a little bit too? Yeah, you know, like. exactly. Like she's got the exact same bone structure with that triangular face. Yeah. And the problem is, like, I was having a hard time masturbating to it. A <laughs> and little then the bit. weekend came on screen. But yeah, then like. Right when I got close, I pictured Johnny Depp because she looks exactly like him. Then it just busted immediately. <laughs> you pictured so John- that was unfortunate. You pictured Johnny from the fucking uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory <laughs> remake, <laughs> that Michael Jackson fucking Indeed. Johnny Depp face, the rubber face thing, which is kind of exactly what she looks like in a weird way. Yeah. I dated the chick that was obsessed with Johnny Depp. Dude, you got her signed yeah. picture of it. Dude. The women, the wow. ladies, they love the some, ladies. They love them some Johnny Depp D. for sure. He doesn't look that great anymore. I'm not gonna lie. No, he, he gained a lot of weight. Weird. and He looks fucking. Uh, I saw somebody tweeted. Uh, they were like, uh, "It's so hot in LA right now that Johnny Depp's only wearing two scarves." <laughs> <laughs> That's a bag of yeah, it really is. A lot of that. I know. I want to see that new fucking uh, Oliver Stone documentary. Oh, um, on the nuclear. Yeah, on shit, the nuclear right? shit. Yeah. Have you seen that at all? No. He's. Uh, he kind of goes back and forth between like a movie and a documentary nowadays, it seems like. And he's got some new documentary about nuclear power and how it can save the planet and whatnot. Huh. Apparently it's, you know, his, he has strong opinions. <laughs> Oliver Stone. Did you so. catch the Rogan episode? Yeah, that was where I heard, that's where I heard about okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which that's one of those things where he's a hundred percent right. Like nuclear is the way to go. Like As long as things don't go wrong, that's clearly the most energy efficient, like best option to go. Having said that, some of the absurd stuff he said in that interview is like, (laughs) yeah, you know, you absorb uh, radiation walking around, you get it off of rocks and stuff. I'm like, bro. Are you telling me yeah, like, like you're gonna set up shop yeah. in Chernobyl and be cool? Oh that he's like, yeah, it's like, over it. It's like, radiation. That, 
that's over true yeah. but there's a certain threshold of where it becomes yeah. extremely dangerous yeah. when you're fucking with uranium yeah it's wildly <laughs> it's like, cancerous yeah. uh, cancer it's inducing like, and fucking massively yeah. deadly you do understand he, that he's right? a uh, fucking weird dude man like yeah. he know, and he knows uh he knows a lot about what he knows but then he doesn't kind of doesn't know shit else about and to his credit at least he will be like yeah i don't know i don't know anything about that yeah yeah but like yeah oliver stone's uh an interesting person you know <laughs> i'm gonna also say oliver stone kind of stinks that's probably a, yeah, a sacrilegious no, no, statement no, no, no i'm kind of mostly oliver stone is, his I movies saw, like, or him a little from column a a little from column b gotcha uh i mean what has he made fuck it. i never saw jfk but i know he's one of the I fucking preeminent fucking hate jfk it's so boring that movie it's so boring okay it's okay. like two hours of kevin costner going back into the left i don't like, like all i think it's parodies, way longer than that I all of the parodies of it of kevin costner going back into the left for eternity are, are <laughs> like downplaying how boring <laughs> all right. it is. interesting interesting i don't like kevin costner so, no, yeah. no, I, I, I stinks. saw the postman once. Yeah, in theater, I and I actually know what my vendetta against Kevin Costner is. Wyatt Earp, that fucking yeah, piece of yeah, shit yeah. went on and on and on. Waterworld, dude. Waterworld was, it was actually all, it was all right. It was kind of fun. Yeah. It was Wyatt Earp though was awful. I don't think I got through the Postman. I oh, the I postman tried. Was so fucking I was horrible. mostly watching the Postman because there was a Tom Petty cameo in it. If you remember. <laughs> He's like, oh, what a, he's like I don't, one of I the don't other blocked it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So certainly was, was. No, but yeah, that movie is god awful. God awful. Waterworld for a long time had a claim to being arguably the worst movie ever made. Yeah. People shit until on they, until Waterworld. Until made the Postman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which was well, the it's next Waterworld movie. on horses slash land. Dude. It's just a worse version of Waterworld. Is that what it's, it is? It's unwatchable. I don't even yeah, fucking remember. At least Waterworld has Dennis Hopper. Uh, yeah, a lot of water. Well. It's terrible, but it's awesome. At the yeah, same it's time. kind of fun. It's, it's like what a Michael Bay movie should have been in many ways. <laughs> Dude, fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. Natural Born Killers. That was another Oliver Stone. Oh, that was, yeah, and you know what? Movie. With, it's a great yeah, movie. Okay. I don't like it. I can't ever no. get into it. I love the soundtrack, but I'm with I'm it's, with Quentin you don't Tarantino. Smoke weed. He ruined Quentin Tarantino's script. I don't think yeah. so. You just don't do enough drugs. No, I don't. That's probably that's what I'm saying. I like Natural Bone Heroes a lot. I think it's a pretty good movie. Robert Downey Jr. is a little over the top in it, but the whole movie is fucking over the top. You know, that's the whole point of that movie. Who's Robert Downey Jr. in that? He's the fucking uh, uh, the reporter. reporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got the Australian accent and everything going <laughs> that's on. That's right. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the fucking war movie, though, with fucking uh, the Oliver Stone fucking uh, Vietnam movie with Charlie Sheen and... Oh, Platoon. Platoon. Yeah, yeah. Platoon's, Platoon's an amazing I movie. I might be dude. up my yeah. ass on some, <laughs> Oliver Stone Oliver, some of those early yeah, Oliver Stones. I mean, like, uh, you know, I've not seen everything he's ever done. He made like, that W flick with Josh Brolin. The, I never, the saw, George, I never saw that either. That was a solid no. flick. Yeah, yeah. But Savage is not so good. He, Snowden, Alexander. He huh? definitely has his political leanings. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's very much like his kind of thing. He's he's pretty, I guess, I don't know, leftist, I would say. He also did make for, uh, Born on the Fourth of July, which I was singing the praises of a handful of weeks a back movie. on an episode. See, I never saw that flight, either. Yeah. I didn't even know that that was fucking Tom Cruise. In that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Gotta yeah. catch some Fourth of July. See, that's again, it fits right Tis into the his season fucking, as well, by the way. Indeed. I, you know, I don't remember. The only thing I remember from Born on the Fourth of July, because I saw it in the theater when I was like six years old with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> they just took nice. me all the R-rated movies. They didn't give yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But uh, is is him? He's like in a strip club and he's in a wheelchair, and there's like a stripper like rubbing up against him, and he's like, uh, and he's just got no penis, just tubes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a like dead dick Tom Cruise yeah. balding so mullet. I can't get hard. Do I can't get hard. Have, My cock doesn't have work. anything fun. <sighs> Jeez, I got away with so watching remember, a lot of movies Forrest growing Gump. up. Dude. <laughs> It's the Lieutenant Dan? <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like Lieutenant the, the Dan life little story darker. of Lieutenant Dan Indeed. for the most part, yeah. <laughs> the only movie I remember my parents shutting off when I was watching it was Pulp Fiction back in the day. Yeah. Which yeah, they got up to the, uh, parents. you know... Like in a bitch's toes is different than eat a pussy or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, all right, we, we shit, had that's like the first shit. scene, dude. Yeah, I think by that I, I just watched that on on VHS or whatever. I rented and watched it by myself. Indeed, yeah. my parents did shut off Natural Born Killers. They're like, this is fucking weird. That's an intense movie, <laughs> yeah. though. Yeah, I was like okay, that's fine. We watched fucking uh, 
my dad rented fucking uh from dusk till dawn yeah and, and okay. fucking my brother and i were still pretty young it was like right when the first came, that movie came out on like 93 or something yeah. and watched we it was like movie night with our neighbors who were friends <laughs> and my dad <laughs> fucking love rose came around in it. and uh you know they're watching it and it's like me and my brother like you know like laying on the floor watching the movie and the adults are on the yeah couch, you know? yeah dude. and yeah i mean and like my mom was mortified but like my dad and the other guy were laughing their asses because right. that movie like it was like at first it's like all right this is just like an action movie yeah pretty much you know and like you know we were allowed to watch it or whatever so it was no problem it takes but a real sharp turn it takes a real turn <laughs> to just the <laughs> land of titties you know vampire titties and like you know like my dad and the other guy are just laughing their asses off which you know? by the i don't know if you remember this the first time i we, caught dust tell dawn yeah. was yeah at our house you were watching it yeah. with me in like yes. seventh or eighth did grade or sh- did your mom shit. shut that off too or no like? no no she yeah. she was letting everything roll by then but it was real yeah, that was, was a real was uncomfortable watch awkward, with your dude. mom in the room and it's like, watching <laughs> early movies when like sex scenes and shit happen with your parents dude that was the awkwardest shit tiny dude. little seventh grade shub the whole time I would mind the hanging out with the kids. Extra, that was like extra, extra quiet, quiet dude. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> And I mean, fucking from Dusk Till Dawn has that fucking strip tease from Selma Hayek, oh, yeah. which is one of the greatest Selma scenes Hayek ever. ever and too. she fucking pours the thing down her leg and Quentin Tarantino's sucking off her toes. Know, he's, he just wrote that shit for himself. He's like, listen, <laughs> I gotta suck this bitch's toes. <laughs> if ever fetish. there were a foot, we gotta, man, we gotta write my fucking, foot fetish yep, into the movie. It's Tarantino, to be sure. I do love that movie, though. I, a great I, movie. I love that movie so much. The, for, for the most part, my taste didn't change that much from when I was young young to when i got older movies music i was like if i love something back in the day like i didn't have too many bad calls where i was like yeah that was some bullshit thing you liked when you were younger that movie i did movie. not like when i was younger and then i rewatched uh, it again like a year ago and i was like this is fucking it, 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 it's yeah, no it was nobody awesome. liked it at the time in a way it was kind of ahead of its time it's so weird yeah and the yeah. fact that it does take that hard turn right in the middle from going to this like bank heist movie to all of a sudden fucking vampire Vampires, strippers yeah, yeah. is like it is one of the craziest left turns oh, of insane. all time yeah. it's absolute insanity but it kind of kicks ass in an alarming oh, okay. was that movie so robert intense. rodriguez uh yes yes it's that a was, it's yeah. a tarantino That's script right. and rodriguez technically directed it but they you know and obviously I mean, it, they made it together it was it's like it's got that like, cheech marin scene the pussy, pussy, Dude, pussy. One of the greatest scenes of all time. The strip club DJ. It's one of the greatest scenes of all time. New flavor. Apple yeah. pie pussy. Oh. And then he fucking... Oh. Like, this punta kicked me in the ribs when I was down. <laughs> Comes Cheech back Marin later. Rules, dude. So good. Cheech Marin, he plays like three characters in, the, in that movie. He's the he's the Border Patrol oh, shit, DEA right. agent or whatever who goes in and searches the <laughs> RV and he opens as Juliette Lewis is on the toilet and he opens the thing and uh, she's sitting on the toilet and her, like panties are around her ankles or whatever and he slowly closes the door and keeps <laughs> looking at it. Do you remember that yeah. shit? So funny. Yeah. She had nothing going on for Dude. like a whole month. <laughs> Juliette she, Lewis also in uh, Natural Born Killers. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, she, star on that. yeah. Yep. she was in a lot of those fucking... Uh, I despise Juliette Lewis, man. I find her to be so over the top. She's like... I like probably those technically yeah. great as an actress, but it's I've never like, liked man, her. there's a lot. I never liked her either. Being stand. honest, she's a, so like there's a show Yellow movies, Jackets that I just watched the second season of. Fucking phenomenal. I heard very good things. about The that. only bad part about it is I don't like Julia Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and she's also like she's too fucking old for the role. Like they're oh. all, they're all supposed to be aged from high school they're all in the same grade on the same soccer team and then they age like you know 20 years or 25 years or something but she's clearly way yeah. older than everybody yeah, else right and, right and it just looks weird it feels weird she oh. did not age well she, no, uh, she's no, no i haven't seen her lately sure, i haven't yeah. seen her since any of that but to make up for it, christina ricci's in it Christine oh, well, she has aged incredibly well. Uh, yeah. Elijah Wood, I want to say, <laughs> he's phenomenal. Oh, shit. He's That's shit. They great, both dude. play Stacked psychopaths cast. in that. It's um, they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've heard the show. Watch it Whoa. just yeah, for those two shows. characters. Is I love both of them. Love Christina Ricci and love fucking uh... Elijah Wood. 
ton of super choice like indie uh, flicks yeah. he's been in. Well, he's another one where we were talking earlier about the fucking Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a lot money. like that. But it's the same kind of thing, dude, where like after making Lord yeah. of the Rings, it's like I can do anything I want from now on. Also, I want to do the I weirdest weirdest shit possible. Yeah. Go on record as saying <laughs> one of the, my favorite show. Well, Sin City goes without saying great flick. Uh, Wilfred. An FX show about a talking dog. Yeah. It was originally an Australian yeah. show that they redid for the U.S. starring Elijah Wood. Yeah. It's a great, great show. I need to dude. watch that. I kept yeah. some will for it. It's I keep forgetting about it, but yeah. like it's been on my radar for like a decade. It's one of the weirdest <laughs> things you've ever seen, but really dry, I hear it's really hilarious. witty, yeah. really, really well written. It's pretty well sure my brother was watching it. Throwing it back to Juliette Lewis. She is fantastic in Christmas Vacation, though. Never oh, forget. Oh, God damn. Never God. forget. Yeah, dude. Wow. Oh, shit. That was her. Oh, <laughs> she's the she's the daughter. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's a young Julia yeah, yeah. before she got way up her ass. She's got to be 15, 16, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's super inappropriate. But yeah. uh, also, <laughs> Juliette Lewis, by the way, there was a mini series that was a Hulu thing. Called, uh, it was about Chippendales. Which I know sounds oh, a little shit. I remember seeing that. With uh, Kumail Nanjiani, yeah. I want to oh, say. Really? Yep. Uh, pretty fucking choice. Wild, wild story that I had no idea about. You catch some Chippendales. It's on, like a, uh, based on a true story situation? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the it's the founder and like the whole story of how Chippendales come Damn. to be. I will not spoil this, but dude, it is fucking Is it directed control, by Michael Bay? <laughs> Uh, if it's not, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm no longer interested in any movies anybody's ever made so this except is for Michael Bay. Bay household from here. <laughs> except for James Cameron. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Only when I run out of Michael Bay movies. You, you can't fuck with blockbuster Big Jim. <laughs> That's true. I do legitimately <laughs> love some James Cameron. He's never really made a bad movie. No, I mean, and he's the savior of the world. You guys watch Future Man? Yes, dude, that first <laughs> no, season. No. Of- <laughs> oh, my God. You I don't know what that Future is. Man? No, I don't even Holy know what that is. Shit. <laughs> Oh my God! You Award gotta find out about day. Corey Wolfhart, dude. <laughs> I know Future Man is the the musician Future Man. Oh my God! With uh, Josh Hutcherson or what? Yeah. That kid from uh, yeah. Hunger Games. So oh, okay. the fr- <laughs> it's, so it's preposterous, it's ridiculous, but it's also pretty fucking great. The first yeah. season of that was really funny. I get made it like three episodes into season two, and I found it to be unwatchable. I it, I'm going uh, back through it right now as we speak because they made a third season, which I never season caught. Season three gets really, really weird. Okay, like way psychedelic. I can see it trippy, going that weird. Like they're out there, but then they come back around. And it's funny in it. Without question, really the well. funniest episode of that first season was that James Cameron episode. Oh my He's got, god. It's, so it's in the near distant future. It's a whole thing I won't get into. But uh, Cameron has like this AI controlled house, right? <laughs> <laughs> just going, award winning director, James Is he Cameron. Always playing <laughs> himself? Like, no, no, it's, like, it's his AI house, but he programmed her to say all the shit. Yeah, and she's yeah. just like juggling his balls the whole time, you know? <laughs> the AI's depressed. Master of Black Belt of Taekwondo, James Cameron says. <laughs> It's pretty goddamn good. Dude. That is hilarious. Yeah, you gotta watch that show. There's What's a, that on? I think it's on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, uh, there's, there's yeah, this got, whole like eighty sequence Hulu. with Corey Hart and yeah. stuff that you'll you'll get <laughs> okay. into it. Okay, I think I'm the only guy on the planet that doesn't have Hulu. You at least got to throw it down and get the six ninety nine. You don't got to go full live Hulu, eighty bucks a month. Either yeah, five ninety nine, six ninety nine a month. Eighty no. bucks a month. Well, it's for live. It's the Hulu app. Yeah, no, I know that. But no, there's the yeah. the actual app is like <laughs> yeah, yeah, seven yeah. bucks. Right. It's Actually, well, well, well worth. It. Avatar is free on Disney Plus. So you pay ten bucks, you get the Hulu, you get the Disney Plus, you watch Avatar: Way of the Water, you watch Future Man, and then you can't. Oh wait, it. can you? Yeah. Is Hulu part of Disney Plus? Are there's a bundle with oh, uh, a bundle. Okay. Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN. Because I'm shit definitely about, stealing my brother's Disney Plus account, so I don't know. I'll have to see if they got Hulu too. <laughs> it's a, probably you. <laughs> yeah, it's on Max though as well, dude. All right, I'll have to soak that in a little bit. Not Future Man, but uh, oh. after. <laughs> yeah, I want to soak that in, too. In conclusion, Michael Bay stinks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on cocktail three here at the the Dangerville Studios. There's nowhere to go but up after uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> rounds one and My, two so far. Oh, mine was good. Mine was good. All right, what'd you make now? What are you on now? What'd you make? Who are you looking at? You. Here, man? Yeah, yeah, All right. go. So this is 
uh, about a shot of rye whiskey, yeah. as we've established, which is, kind of which is the superior, superior whiskey to yeah. bourbon, to be sure. That's got to be the staple. It's got to be rye over bourbon. Agreed. Uh, a little bit uh, of that Chambord, about a half shot of that Chambord, if I'm okay. remembering that name correctly. Yep, yep. Uh, and then a little splash, maybe like a quarter or a third a shot of Cointreau. Yeah. And uh, some Cardamom bitters here. Okay. With no the ginger, cherry. No ginger beer? No ginger okay. beer. Uh, I'm a with grown ass man. I'm not fucking around with that ginger beer. We drink that's, whiskey and ginger. <laughs> Literally, that's our whole drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah. This might be a mic drop moment right here. This we we it's might that have bad? It. No, it's good. No, <laughs> it's good. We might have, this is what I was trying to go for with the first drink, so get a little uh, a little taste of that bad boy right there. I, I see, really like I it. I don't wedding. love that Chambord stuff or whatever though. It tastes like Tootsie Roll to Ooh, me. Oh, I'm a big so, fan. It's, of it. This is pretty good though, I'm not gonna lie. Pretty good. I'm loving that. That's kinda right in my wheelhouse right there. Little notes of chocolate. Yeah, that's what I don't love about it. But that's good. That's good, man. I like that. That's a winner. Yeah, that's good shit. That's solid right there. All right, so I made the same drink before, but with less ginger beer, and then I switched out the Grand Marnier with the Contro or whatever, so it's kind of a different orange. Okay. So what okay. I'm trying to do is do, you got the cherry and then an orange liqueur, so it's kind of like an old-fashioned right, with the right. rye whiskey, and then the cardamom bitters, and then more of this, like a splash of ginger beer. Yep. To kind of top it off, and I think I might like this a little better. I I, I didn't love the uh, when I drank them straight. I didn't love the control more than the Grand Marnier or whatever. But like to me, this works a little better in the cocktail for the orange. It's yeah. more of a straight up orange triple sec. So I was so. fucking around with. Uh, have you ever had a sidecar before? Which mm. is oh, some kind of bourbon it. cocktail with that Contro. That stuff goes a long way. So I just it is not real I, th I think I use too much. Familiar. I would say I probably use too much it's of the. It's really yeah. sweet. It's a little orangey, but. I actually like that quite it's a bit. It's good yeah. though, right? Yeah. Maybe a that's touch really good. less of that. That's control. what I'm saying. Yep. Is I use yep. a little bit much of that, but like overall, it's that's kind of uh, what I'm trying to get to. I love the orange flavor of that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just ultra, ultra sweet. So just a little dash yep. of that yep. goes a lot. But that's yep. super fucking solid too. I think it's really good. Yep. I didn't do anything special. I just made a mule. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I'm just getting fucking hammers out. <laughs> Fuck you guys, you some, stupid podcast. Some rice, some lime juice. Actually, I threw a little of the rhubarb bitters in there. I don't know if that did anything. That stuff's but, good, uh, right? Dude, that rhubarb bitters is it's, good. Ooh, you know some what? Beer. It's nice. We uh, probably we got to try both of these with some lemon juice at some point because something yeah, like that, I got the lemons, acidity yeah. to cut mm -hmm. the uh, cut yeah, the well, sweetness a little right. bit. That with the the lemon juice might yeah. be fucking pretty that, goddamn good. Shit, those drinks we were just having, they were doing lime in it. You yeah, know, to cut. Got to have so. that citrus yeah. in the bourbon yeah. or uh, whiskey. Yeah, good shit. All right. Listen up, man. <laughs> He's it. Hitting this goddamn e cig, this community e cig remaining. Or no, that's no, your own. A, oh, that's a, a, yeah. a cherry cola. Rhythm. Fucking lens keeps fucking uh, rolling up in here. Let me hit that fucking e cig that he was over the other night. Chachi's e cig <laughs> from like two months ago. Shout out to all those cocksuckers. It's getting passed around like Amber Heard to the fucking Jeff Bezos party or something. <laughs> All right, man, listen. I'm getting pretty drunk. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been a long week. Yeah, sure has. You know, I'm, I'm finding like uh, I can't really keep up on what's happening <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know, oh, the same terrible stuff. <laughs> You know, a lot to uh, a lot to keep up on. A lot of left, a lot of right. Not too much in the center. Uh, I don't know if the same setup is the best move. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Can we just make a cut of the oh, terrible the intro? And just use it every, every time. Just, time. We're just wasting 30 seconds of our lives. We <laughs> the same material. Let's just cut right to the chase. Moving on. All right. You want to get us kicked off here? You've got like 48 news. Yeah, I got a couple of extras because right. uh, I, I forgot mine again last week. So I didn't have any last week. So I had a couple extra. So, uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get things. We'll get, <laughs> oh, we'll get things going here. A woman walking on the beach finds a mastodon <laughs> tooth. 
you hear about this, guys? I did indeed. A woman taking a Memorial Day weekend stroll on a California beach found something unusual sticking out of the sand. A tooth from a mastodon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wonder where he's going with this one. Guitarist Brent Hines confirmed <laughs> the band was indeed on tour in the area, and he lost the tooth fighting a group of hippies. <laughs> Yeah, essentially the same <laughs> joke. There's only one way to go. Marginally man. better, but... Uh, uh, yeah, 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 I bet. Go. No, no, Let's hear it. It's literally the same thing okay, for the most yeah. part. So, uh, from... <laughs> <laughs> Pioneering the story from M. Brennan Hines, or Brent Hines, thank the woman for her discovery and knowing that he'd been looking for that tooth all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it, it stinks. Yeah. It's yeah. just the girl of the pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Mastodon rules. Mastodon does they rule. rule at an unreasonable rate. What a fun fucking live fucking show Mastodon that is. Kicks that ass kind ass of is like what a live show should yeah. be. In They're the estimation. Michael Bay of metal, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like fun I equivalent. Behind that. Yeah. It feels very much like probably what the eighties was live concert wise, where it's just like fun fucking get after it rock, everybody yeah. partying out, like a lot of that. I was uh perusing through these stories before we started and I forgot how truly terrible all of these jokes are. I wrote these <laughs> earlier this week and they're just indescribably bad across the board. Having said that, first up on my docket. We've got poker pro Tom Duan calls down a bluff for three point one million and wins the largest pot in broadcast history. Wow! Yeah, well played. So poker pro Tom Duan, who's my boy, by the way, I think he's the finest poker player to ever walk this fine earth. Made we'll history see. last week, calling down multiple bets from self-proclaimed cryptocurrency millionaire Wesley Faith <laughs> to win a three point one million dollar pot. The largest ever seen on TV or a live stream. Yeah. Wow, nice. It was the largest bluff called since R. Kelly proclaimed the jury of his <laughs> peers that he prefers his women to be at least 18 years of age. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Poor R. Kelly. It's been a little bit since, uh, since an R. Kelly joke. It was, <laughs> it was long overdue, gentlemen. All right, moving right along. Artificial intelligence raises risk of extinction, experts say, in new warning. Wow. Yeah. Scientists and tech industry leaders, including high-level executives at Microsoft and Google, issued a new warning Tuesday about the perils that artificial intelligence poses to humankind. Damn. I know. Sam Altman, CEO of ChatGPT, and Jeffrey Hinton, a computer scientist known as the godfather of artificial, artificial intelligence, were among the hundreds of leading figures who signed the statement, which was posted on the Center for AI Safety's website. Okay. These guys are fucking really going all in. It's fucking wild. Indeed. In response, a delegation of AI proponents issued their own statement claiming mm-hmm. that hu- humanity has nothing to fear. <laughs> the statement includes signatures from several esteemed figures such as Hellbot 9000, <laughs> Skynet, <laughs> and of course, Agent Smith. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's a, a, that's a, a lot. lot of lead up to not a lot, not a lot of solid <laughs> joke there. <laughs> All right, boys. James Webb Telescope spies earliest complex molecules in the universe. Whoa. Did you read about this one? No, that's cool, though. So astronomers have detected the oldest known examples of complex organic molecules in the universe, which were created as a result of the Big Bang. These complex organic molecules are common in space, though detecting them uh, in very distant galaxies that form when the universe was relatively young has been challenging. Yeah. Because of this difficulty, scientists have taken to studying the much more readily available organic material left in young planetary bodies by Jared Fogel, <laughs> who over the years has left countless deposits after a series of big bangs having taken oh, place Jesus. between 2007 and 2015. Oh, man. Had to go back to wow. back. R. Kelly, R. Jared Kelly, Fogel. Jay Fogel. Been a hot minute before uh, both of those. We'll go ahead and give myself one of these there. A preemptive uh, shitting on that joke before oh. Boston, you can beat me to the punch. Jared Fogel. All right, guys. Zoe the Labrador breaks record for longest tongue on a living dog. Holy smokes. I know. The Guinness World Record for longest tongue on a living dog. I love how they preface this real quick. They preface it on a living, <laughs> a living dog. dog. Like, okay, is it different on your right. fucking dead dog? <laughs> 
Yeah, the new title holder, Zoe, the Labrador and German Shepherd mix, whose slobbery appendage measures a whopping five inches. <laughs> <laughs> An outraged Gene yeah. Simmons comment. Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah, beer. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a couple of routes to go with that. I was going to do something about the slobbery five inches. Yeah, you know, but yeah. I figured he had to go with Gene Simmons on that. There's an inevitable Gene Simmons joke there, to be sure. Speaking of, my friend, uh, I think you've got a, a banger here about oh, yeah. a semi-related topic, if I'm not mistaken. I'm just, uh, the jokes write themselves, so I'm just going to read this off. Woman charged... After filming herself having sex with dogs, out, wait, 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 outside of church. Whoa! <laughs> Throw it down. So we're going to go into her tweets after she got out of jail. <laughs> There's, the most annoying thing about getting out of jail is seeing how people are so judgmental. Yes, I did it in a church, but some of you don't even go to church. Some, <laughs> some of you are judging me, but God didn't judge me. At the end of the day, <laughs> yes, did, I'm yes, thick, did. cute, and very smart. Ooh. Oh, wow, dude. Wow. Oh, wait, wait. Here's the issue I have with people on Twitter. I know for a fact that what I do with my dogs is normal. You all do it too. Whoa. <laughs> it's been normal. <laughs> Ask your aunt's sisters, mom's nieces. They do it too. Whoa. But Americans are hypocrites. Europeans support me though. They reel over there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this bitch couldn't be more off base in any Holy one of those shit. 15 takes. Dude. This, this, this is even... Jesus walks in me. He loves. He teaches love. <laughs> well, I love the fuck out of my dogs. Oh my god! Clearly, I, guess I mean. So. Yeah. I wow. mean, I'm speaking of five inch slobbering tongue, <laughs> she's yes. got to hook up with fucking <laughs> Zoe the Labrador. Has got to get in on this, Indeed. dude. Wow, that is wow, I, absolutely crazy. That's a stunner right there, dude. The. Uh, <laughs> You kind of got to respect her doubling down, you know? She's like, yeah, I did, yeah, it, I did it. What up? I fuck my what dogs. Up, what do you want from me? Yeah. Hey, you got to post through it. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Outside of the church is in a specially bold mood. For real. Yeah, I was. All right. What else you got? You got more? I don't even remember where we're at. Is it, is it me up? That's, yeah, um, I think it's you. That one threw me for a little bit of a loop. Yeah, All that's right. a lot. That's a lot to take in. <laughs> So, a GPS mistake took a 60-year-old driver to the Canadian border where he was arrested with 400 pounds of cannabis and over 600 grand in his car. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, a 60-year-old American driver was arrested last week after the uh, incorrect GPS coordinates brought him to Canada's Rainbow Bridge border crossing Whoa. in Niagara Falls, yeah. Ontario. With a huge quantity of marijuana and over six hundred thousand dollars of cash in his car. Damn. So the man took full responsibility for his actions and lapse in judgment, stating that the use of Apple Maps is clearly irresponsible and indicative <laughs> of poor judgment on his part. Indeed. Should have went Google. Indeed. Should have went Google. What, what are up the to correct the GPS going. coordinates? <laughs> <laughs> rolling up to the border. Oh, I'm just uh, crossing the border for some uh, french fries and gravy. <laughs> oh, Indeed. All right. Moving along here. New Jersey utilities float solar panels on a reservoir powering water treatment plant. Have you heard about this? Oh, wow. Man. Yeah. A 17-acre solar array consisting of 16,510 solar panels is the largest floating solar array in North America. Damn. Yeah. The NJR Clean Energy Ventures, who built the vast array of solar panels, was faced with the problem of getting them to float. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the engineers from the company solved the issue by lashing them to all the dead bodies of mafia henchmen floating <laughs> in the reservoir. <laughs> <laughs> After a few weeks, unfortunately, it became clear that the panels were not providing the estimated power originally speculated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. After an investigation, the team was discouraged to find the panels being blocked by hundreds of Jersey Shore bros <laughs> who flocked to the site to improve their suntan. All right. I'm going to allow it. <laughs> this cat's really going ham on the yeah, chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she loves this. Out. This is her home now. The pod lounge has basically <laughs> become Gracie's home. So, All right. 
So we've got an update on a, uh, a story that we had a while back here, the elusive Dangerville uh, sequel story here. So baby boxes are getting pushed back in Florida. Do you remember the baby box yes. conversation? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So for the one or two people who haven't listened to every one of these podcasts out there, so baby boxes are this glorious invention Similar to the old school blockbuster style of movie drop off where it's <laughs> like, right. yeah, I'm all set just with just this. Just put on the slide, chuck it in there and uh, kind of toss it in. They had them outside of firehouses, hospitals, all these different things. You just, uh, you know, like a bad Michael Bay flick. You just tuck it in there. <laughs> Here's my baby. Kind of return that shit when you're all set with it. So the complaint from Florida lawmakers is that the boxes are expensive and unnecessary. <laughs> Governor Ron DeSantis commented, it's a matter of fiscal responsibility. <laughs> After much debate, we've come to the conclusion that the boxes are simply too expensive to justify the costs, especially given that we've got perfectly good dumpsters on any number of street corners <laughs> in the state. Indeed. Indeed. So there's a concern that these boxes are potentially dangerous, which it sounds like off the cuff, but they are both climate controlled and well ventilated. Wow. Which is like literally more than most of my friends can say about their homes. <laughs> Indeed. And Indeed. They sound pretty Indeed. cozy. Yeah. <laughs> like, can I get one of these? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's wild though, man. I, th I feel like we need to write a movie called The Baby Box. Yeah. And it's like about somebody, I don't know, to get a baby out of one of these boxes or something. Yeah, it's yeah. like some kind of black and white babies are dropped off in the box. They become brothers, go yeah. up to rob a bank. And you know, when they're steal older, an they steal an ambulance for a, for a it could heroic work. getaway. It could work. That they then subsequently save the that person working. that they shot and then are heralded as heroes there. Yeah, the cop that pulled the baby out of the baby <laughs> box gets shot by the baby from the baby box. Oh, Somehow the baby smack, has a dude. shotgun. You know. yeah. I see it working. A That's a Directed bang. by Michael Bay. <laughs> All right, guys. Look who's hanging around now. Oh, mm. wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize for that. <laughs> Woman who threatened Nancy Pelosi with hanging during Capitol riot gets over two years in prison. I got a sneaking suspicion yeah. of where this one's yeah. going. Okay. okay. Pauline Bauer was near Pelosi's office suite on January 6, 2001, when she yelled at police officers to bring out the California Democrat so the mob of Donald Trump supporters could hang her. Mm, yep. Intense. <laughs> At her defense in court, Bauer said, I didn't think it would do any real harm to Pelosi since she's already an undead corpse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes! Right. Smash, smash, smash. Boss D loving him some Boss D. Yeah, that <laughs> All out. All right. Austrian party reverses leadership result after spreadsheet hiccup. Did you see this? One? <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I did. I actually I did see this. One. Yes. Okay. So Austria's main center left opposition party on Monday reversed the result of its weekend leadership election, announcing that a computer error originally led to the wrong candidate being declared the winner. Yeah. Yep. In related news, Steve Harvey has recently resigned <laughs> yeah. his position as Austria's main center-left opposition party ballot counter. That's a deep dive. Oh, my God. That's a deep cut for those. Oh, yeah, <laughs> baby. Well played. What was funny was when you were reading it, I was like, through my head, I, I was going to say, oh, they should have got Steve Harvey to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like some extremely topical Steve Harvey Indeed. jokes from 10 years some ago. Some kind of hanging Chad joke <laughs> right. in there, too. Right, yeah. Uh, you, guys hear about the, Kroger. <laughs> you guys hear about this shit? A Yellowstone tourist took a baby elk for a ride in their car. Whoa, I didn't yes. ask. That's a good idea. So, yes. Officials said that over Memorial Day weekend, vi visitors put a newborn elk in their car while driving in the park and brought the animal to the West Yellowstone, Montana Police Department. Very weird. When Yellowstone police questioned the driver about the vehicle, he explained he was in a hurry and just trying to use the carpool lane. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. I accidentally bumped that cricket one, which really nails down that psych out for a solid 45 seconds. Is he Larry David? Oh, I was trying to use the carpool lane. I was breaking your balls. I'll out. I'll out. <laughs> that was terrible. All right. I got, I got two more. You got two more? Yeah, All yeah. Right, you want to do one more and then I'll go? 
Yeah, I got you round. You got to close I, it. Yeah, I do. You I do. You feel comfortable about I, closing? I do. I okay. do indeed. You want, all right? So you want me to go? Yeah. Okay. Go. Strap in for this one, boys. This is more. A lot of animal news indeed. happening indeed. happening this time. A rare white bison was born at Wyoming State Park. Oh wow! Yeah. A state park in the southwest corner of Wyoming has welcomed an ultra rare member of the community, a tiny fuzzy white bison. Okay. Okay. And Mike it marks the first time in Wyoming history that something white would be considered rare in Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Wyoming State Park shared a photo of the new calf with its mother, which reside at the Bear River State Park. Okay. Yeah. Uh she said we're not sure if it's a bull calf or a heifer calf, Park Superintendent Tiffany Sager told the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She went on to explain, if it was a normal black bison, we'd be able to tell right away. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent Sager then shared her concerns about the little one's ability to keep up with its mother and the herd as they navigate the intense terrain <laughs> of the Wyoming plains, which include gullies, ditches, creeks, hills, and other obstacles, yeah. noting it's normally not a problem, but white bison can't <laughs> jump. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord. Great by Buffalo. <laughs> a hot tub time machine no yeah. no fair enough fair. that's a good movie uh two other stories you see i think it was also in yellowstone which was a story earlier two people were trying to take pictures next to fucking little baby bison they got utterly fucked up one of them no one of the guys grabbed a bison yeah and then it got shunned from the herd yeah and they had after. to kill it yeah yeah yeah, yeah i saw that jackass. that was all part of this actually the same story oh, okay. or that the last one i did about the the people were grabbing the baby elk it was all kind of part of the same story of a uh, but yeah people keep fucking with wildlife over there so. yeah don't touch yeah. wildlife you fucking in idiots. the wild all right here we'll go with this one this uh <laughs> New York's <laughs> sinking under its own weight. Yeah, the Big Apple uh, is gradually going down, partly yeah. because of the immense weight of the skyscrapers, and is likely to exacerbate the problem of the rising sea level caused by warming temperatures and the melting of the world's ice caps. Yep. To help combat the issue, New York is spending billions of dollars building seawalls, raising roads, and moving Brandon Fraser somewhere closer <laughs> to the middle of the country. Oh, ah, no. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Leave Brandon Fraser alone. Really hitting the trifecta yep. of <laughs> beating up dead horse material oh, just wait. for the Dangerville oh, podcast just wait. here. Just wait. Wrapping it up here. <laughs> this last headline really takes the cake. A bear has helped itself to 60 cupcakes oh, from Jesus a Connecticut Christ. bakery, yeah. scaring employees. Did you see this? Yeah. You hear yeah, about this? Yeah. A hungry black bear barged into a garage of Connecticut bakery, scared several employees, and helped itself to 60 cupcakes before ambling away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder where he's going yep. with this. The bear <laughs> later apologized, saying, I'm really sorry, but all that cocaine really gave me the munchies. Oh, uh, you're getting yeah. away with this. And that is your. <laughs> All right, I'm retiring the, the cocaine bear material. That's it. That's the last one. That movie came out six months ago. Nobody saw it. Now, I contend it gets funnier the more that material is being up. Like, the movie was four years ago and nobody cared about it then, dude. On the uh, epic 100th episode, it's still it's laying out cocaine, cocaine bear, black lust, cocaine bear material. <laughs> Well, Kim K in there for good measure, <laughs> undoubtedly. Oh god, I don't want to see it. I like it'll ruin. It, I feel like it'll ruin everything. Yeah, like, it's, it's funnier yeah, as a premise. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it, it is one of those things be. that the premise is funnier than any way you could actually execute it. Just the actual premise yeah. of the yeah. cocaine bears. It's, Speaking of, did you see they've got a new movie? So it's an animated flick. I want to say about pets. Will Ferrell's one of the voices. There are a couple other pretty famous voices. The pets that I don't remember. And it's by the makers of your uh, your favorite movie, Cocaine Bear. Though. Oh, really? Don't make okay. it. Nope. So keep, keep out on the uh, keep on the lookout for that fucking. 
Well, after the piece of shit. immense smash hit that was <laughs> Cocaine Bear, I'm sure they can kind of do whatever they want. It was wildly popular. <laughs> oh, you know, that was uh, dr- that was the directorial debut of that, uh, what's her name, Elizabeth Smart, maybe? Elizabeth the Banks. Chick- Elizabeth Banks, thank you. Yeah, that was her first flick. Yeah. She made Cocaine oh, yeah, Bear? That, yeah, that's she right. She sure was. was. Yeah. Okay. I don't know who Elizabeth Banks is, so. Uh, you would You'd know her if you saw her. Yeah. She was the okay. chick in Forty Year Old Virgin, the freaky chick that Seth Rogen ends up oh, banging yeah, yeah. in the bathtub after. Uh, oh, Carole yeah, her yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah well, she's right. hilarious. By yeah, the she's way. cool. Yeah. Big fan of Elizabeth Banks. Indeed, she's always like the crazy hot blonde girl in a comedy. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. yeah, indeed, she's good. So what else is going on? <laughs> is there more news uh you know there is more news dude i wanted to talk to you about it you got any thoughts on this fucking shit going on with the ramstein right now dude? uh so here's my take on it whether or not like whatever whether there was like sexual assault happening or anything having like a pr team that assembles a bunch of cute young women yeah. Under the pretense of, hey, are you maybe open to having sex with gross, really old, 60 year old So I feel Linda like, men. sorry to jump in. We got, we kind of got to set this up. <laughs> I've got no idea. <laughs> oh, I'm you know, oh, man, yeah. no, it comes yeah. out that this, there's a woman goes off on like this whole like long tirade on Twitter or Instagram or something about okay. how she went to, she got invited to a special party. For Till Lindemann from a marketing manager, casting director is the person's title, yeah. official title. Okay. Rammstein has a casting director. The official casting power director of Rammstein. Hot yes. young women for parties in whatever city Rammstein's in to be there for Till Lindemann. Not the rest they of get, the band, just well, Till. <laughs> well, they get to be, they get, they get in to be the, the front row and thing. that too they're row zero yeah, so they're yeah, also the yeah, front okay. row but there's like a pre-show party and then some i i don't really like the story is kind of disjointed. A little unclear. yeah which is but there's and about. joe letts from yeah who's like a awful drummer that i saw him play with copy christ once and that's all i need to know about never wanting to know anything about the guy again um he, like just the biggest grandstanding jackass fucking person i've ever seen anyway we he's involved Portnoy somehow i don't even know here on the kid or uh... uh yeah like he was like just throwing drumsticks down to make like one of the crew people come and pick it back up and shit like that oh, it was like sauce. really fucking yeah, obnoxious lame. i'm like why are you fucking with your people like Super this lame, yeah. okay but uh he's involved somehow and i'm like yeah. where the fuck is joe let's coming from yeah but um i guess like till lindemann shows up the room's full of hot young instagram girls he gives everyone shots of tequila and then later, people come up to them or come up to one or more of them and say, hey, Till would like you to meet him in the secret room under the stage for sex. And then they go in there and they're like, and have eh, sex. I don't really want to have sex with this gross <laughs> old man. Well, that, she didn't. <laughs> That's what they most well, do. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, and, and so her claim was that she got drugged and yeah. she didn't remember things. But that oh, was really wow. sketchy and weird, yeah, I feel yes. like. So, yes. Uh, but. Yes. Regardless of right, all that, right. whether or not there is anything illicit, like the idea that he's got a hired team to assemble these parties of young women, impressionable young women, who he clearly is like, I'm the celebrity that you love. Yeah. There's like a power dynamic thing there that's bad. It's fucking creepy and weird and gross. You're old, dude. You're really fucking old. A little and more really of a gross. pre Me Too or a Me it, Too movement uh, move there. Yeah. It's it's yeah. like I don't know. I like Not I. So I'm much like, these days is gonna go over well. Yeah. I can look at pictures of Till Lindemann now, and I'm like. No, He's stay not the away from the twenty year old yeah, yeah. women. Like, <laughs> but that's are, not are a, they twenty? How old was this one? I, I don't actually know. I, I'm, I actually, I'm assuming so young, younger. I, but I don't know about that. I put, I, I feel like anybody at a Ramstein show is fucking forty. <laughs> first of all, you know what I mean. Like, there's well, that. this is Europe. This is yeah. like Lithuania and Ramstein's been right, huge right, right. in Europe. She way might have been than, twenty, but she read it to uh, junior you know, level, under thirty wise, probably. So, I don't know. It's. It's still weird to me. I'm like, this is what you like. It is. Go hire is. a bunch of fucking prostitutes, dude. You're well, like, there's, yeah. also, there's well, sex workers everywhere. There's right. plenty there's of money. There's plenty of women at the Ramstein show that would fucking that bang Till like, or like, any other guys. It's, it's really know. just bizarre. The whole so, thing's bizarre. Yeah. 
he yeah. deleted his Twitter account yeah. or his Instagram account, and the band had like weird, obscure, vague statements on Their it. Their statements and like, are weird. I got to agree. I and I don't know if they're like, are they not translating from German real well? well? That could be happening too. Uh, yeah. You know, in, like, but they, I agree. They're a little weird. Now, like, again, like, I got, uh, if they're drugging people or anything like that's happening for real, then obviously that is not okay in any fucking yeah. way. Let's just right. fucking. That said, I feel like it's just like the court of public opinion on Twitter and everybody's just like, oh, rant, they're just the evilest thing ever now. And I'm like, I'm yeah, kind of like behind that at all. I'm kind of like, right? OK, like, you know, like you can't just be like it, it. We have due process. We have like you can't just make one person makes a claim and now everybody's just like, oh, they're the devil. And it's like, OK, yeah. maybe maybe they are. Maybe they are. But let's fucking like hear this out and get some fucking facts because oh, none yeah. of us were there. And this is some random person on Twitter. And maybe she's right. But she basically says she's like, I, bl I there's a parts of the show I can't remember. I think I blacked out. I only had two beers and a shot of tequila. And so, okay, my question, you said, did that shot of tequila come from them? That well, that's team? the thing. He gave everybody shots of tequila okay, in the same see, bottle. So, like, the that, story That I didn't even know. But weird. I was like, did you just it, buy these drinks? Like, what does that it, mean? Right, and she's basically, she's basically going, yeah, I think I was drugged. And it's like, okay, if you were drugged, yeah, that obviously is terrible. But, like, there's tons of people at these things. And, like... I'm like, are, were you drugged or not? Because being like, you know, you just throwing out like, I think I might have been drugged. I can't remember. I can't remember half of the Ramstein show that I was at. It's you know yeah, what I mean. I guess th from what I understand, there's a lot more stories like that that have existed for a long that, time. That's but my next like, point is, is there? And maybe wait, there is. Maybe yeah. there is. But it, like all the articles say other people have come forward and I'm going I'm look. I looked into it. Where? Yeah. Who? Because well, these yeah. articles are just saying other people have come forward, and I'm like, maybe they have. But if they have, then we need to we need to know that because I couldn't find it. And I'm not trying to be somebody who's just like defending, but it's also like I think they have a right to a defense. If they were doing something terrible, then that's terrible, and I don't. I, and I hate that because I love Ramstein, and like I don't want to be able to not be a fan anymore. You know, which will kind of be the case if this comes out to be the truth. Uh, it's kind of going to be like, well, I can't really love those guys anymore. I, but the thing that bugs me, too, is that, like there's no there's no journalistic integrity in any of the reporting on exactly. this. Like I'm reading Somebody their initial article that broke that was yeah. like some fucking blog. Yeah. And they're and their their big thing was people on Reddit are saying yes. that they That's disagree or agree. Yeah. Yeah. And it's what like, the fuck yeah. is this? This is just that the court of like, social media. Yeah. It's, it, doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Anyone. There's no evidence. And I'm thinking, you know, do you guys remember like three years ago, all this shit came out about, came out about Maynard. They tried to me too Maynard. Yeah. That, and that was like, all fake. All fake. Right. And I'm like, yeah. and, and, the, and like that was a little more easily clearly fake than this situation but all i'm saying is like people jumped on that immediately everybody was fucking just ready to just like everybody loves to tear down a celebrity yeah you know so it's like i don't know i don't know the whole the whole thing to me is just kind of like can we get some actual facts here and like remember guys it is innocent until proven guilty at least here in america i'm sure germany has very similar laws and like, let's like find out the fucking facts before we destroy somebody's life. And if, <laughs> if they were doing that, then it is a hundred percent deserved. Again, I got to be clear, but it's like, you know, can't we fucking like, you know, get some real fucking facts. That's my fucking thing about it. And everybody's just like, oh, they're the wor fucking worst thing. And it's like, have you heard Ramstein? <laughs> like, do you know what they're like? Yeah. You know, like yeah. their songs are pussy and they, they put it's like, yeah, they're fucking a bunch of creeps, you know, I, like. Till was definitely clear about being a creepy old man from yeah, the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> that was like, it. You knew what you were getting yourself into, and it's like the casting director thing. It's like, well, also they do legitimately film all of these concerts, and I could see yeah. wanting to put a bunch of hot chicks in the front row. This is not new. This yeah. has been done, you know, for every music video ever made. 
you know, in, in a live context. So I don't know. That's my take on it. I hope it's not true. If it is true, then fuck them. But I just feel like with all of this shit, it's just the court of public opinion on social media immediately jumps to the fact that they're guilty. They did all this. They're fucking a bunch of creeps. And it's just like, you're either the fucking hero. Or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And it's just kind you know, of, I don't know. The absurdity of it too, is that everybody that is trying, that is angry about this and just jumping to conclusions or whatever, they're going to keep posting about it endlessly and then getting in arguments with people on yeah. other posts. And like, guess how the fucking algorithm works? Exactly. You're not, that's what I'm saying. You're not helping your cause by just ranting about the best thing you can do is just shut the fuck up about it and never bring it up because then it won't rise to the top. Of everybody's goddamn feed. Like, I, I swear to Christ, I see every couple of months the same fucking people lose their fucking minds about Marilyn Manson. I'm like, I don't think about Marilyn Manson. Right, 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 right. Ever yeah. until you people mention it, good or bad. Yeah, so what are you about doing? Marilyn Manson since beautiful people. <laughs> I know. I'm like, like, just go, oh, wow, that's fucking gross. I'm never going to talk about Rammstein again and go yeah. on with your life. Like, well, that, her story is, do. too, her actual story is that. Uh, I was kind of recruited on this thing. I got in the front row, whatever. I got uh, backstage during the performance or right after or whatever it was. And uh, Till comes down and he wants to have sex with me. Yeah. And she says no. She says he gets aggressive and pouty about it, basically. Because it tells her to get the fuck out. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and like, well, no, well, well, I think she says that he he leaves. But he's no. like, he's like pissed, you know, yeah. but he's like, I'm, you know, I'm the fuck out, you know, or whatever. But it's also like, OK, that that's not great. That's, you know, kind of fucked up. But at the same time, it's like you said no. And he left. Yeah. I mean, it's it's shitty behavior. Yeah. But, but it's, it's not, not necessary. Rape, it's not rape. You know? It's not sexual assault. Yeah. And it's like, did and did they if they actually drugged people or whatever, which seems to be very dubious claim in my opinion from what i've read about it that's obviously super fucked up if they're doing it but if they didn't drug anybody there's no crime of any kind here you know yeah so I mean, I and that's the thing that's what i'm like personally i the facts i know are that there's this row zero whatever it is yeah and there's these parties that seems beyond doubt like that's happening yeah yeah they're, and i yeah, and i look yeah. at the facts of that and i go I'm not really into that. That's kind of gross, and I I don't like that. Exactly. Given who Till is and how old he is and what he looks like and who they're probably recruiting, and so I'm gonna just put it out of my mind and not listen to Rammstein or not do whatever. I mean, if I hear Rammstein, whatever, it's not gonna. I'm not gonna turn to dust. It's it's <laughs> like, such a it's, weird time right now, and not that this hasn't always been the case, but with the proliferation of social media and the immediacy of these types of claims getting disseminated, yeah, you are immediately strapped to the cross and, and yep. burned at the stake, right? He's and, been dropped from his publisher label already. And that's the thing, right? Like, it, it's such a hot button issue. And to be clear, like, I know he said this a thousand times, like, yeah. if they did it, this is, you know, all moot. Obviously, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Don't drug, don't drug people. Yeah, that's yeah. not okay. In conclusion, by any means. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. But, like, man, the immediacy with which your life is ruined by somebody stating something yep. that may or on may not Reddit. be true is yep. such. And the unfortunate thing is there's no way around it, right? Like, it's just, it's a nature of the beast thing. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle at this point, right? Yep. Because yeah, it's he, out there and people read the headlines and the salacious thing sticks. Yep. And any subsequent clearing of your name is yep. moot and yep. it does not matter at that yep. point because the damage yeah. has been done. It's ingrained in people's minds. Yep. And with the 24-hour news cycle, we are all on to the next thing. And like, oh, by the way, our bad on this one. But nobody hears yeah, that. They, yeah, yeah, they never, if there's a, if it comes out at all, none of this is true. Or my other thought is like this Joel Letts character who is acting as this casting director or whatever, or some other guy. He wasn't like, even the casting director. He was just 
there. He was the guy yeah. that came and found the girl and brought her under the stage. Right. It's weird. And I'm like, what's the context on this? Yeah. He's not even playing with the band. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> you know, it could be something like that guy or some of the other guy or some yeah. other guy. Maybe they were putting some roofy well, shit yeah, in. Well, yeah, it could have been know? anybody. Because that's how that's how they keep their job is yeah, by getting these yeah, girls yeah. to fuck them. And maybe they don't even have any knowledge of any of this. Could that's a, a pure speculation? I don't know. No, but it, it could, been it could be many levels of these things. Uh, so I don't know the whole thing. And it's like, to me, like I wanted to kind of make some of these arguments, but it's like, if I were to say that online, I would be fucking immediately castrated. Like, Oh, you're the biggest piece of shit ever. And I'm like, for saying there should be due process, at least let's at least give people due process. I think that's fair. There's, I I mean, it's the thing is it's, it's not even specifically this type of thing. There's this very toxic kind of bubble that exists in social media that perpetuates itself that is very just it 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 doesn't matter if it's like this if it's rape or if it's some other slight of like oh you think universal health care should be done like this instead of like that it just it's this desire to like excommunicate right somebody that right 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 it, and and it's been going on a long fucking yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. And and it's it's not even ideological at, at any point. Yeah. Because I see it from the same people over and over and over yeah. again in different places where it just the like they just want to get in a lynch mob and exactly, in, exactly. And they have no exactly. other outlet for, for it, anything. It's very hard not to because like when an accusation like this comes up it's so disgusting that you immediately have such a visceral reaction right. oh, yeah, to you it do. Yeah. that it's really hard to moderate yourself. And I remember like the first case, because I fell into this trap one time too, where I heard the headline and immediately castigated these people and their pieces of shit, fucking burn them at the cross type thing, was the Duke lacrosse scandal. A number of years ago, which I I don't think you guys are sports God, guys, but like it, it I, was I remember a massive, that massive being story. a thing. I don't remember the details. So but I remember the hearing about the it. quick summary is the Duke lacrosse team, which exactly as you think it would be, it's all rich white kids, lawyers and doctors. You know, Duke is a, yeah, you know, highly regarded school. So it's all rich white kids, and there was a stripper that was paid for, brought to some kind of party accusations of rape etc that was the headline and i immediately was like these guys are fucking pieces of shit get rid of them everything else seemed to be conclusive court of public opinion decided upon right away and then a handful of months later nope she made it all up admitted that she made it up yep all false all bullshit yep and these kids lives like yeah I, you know, like they were all obviously going to go places, right? You're going to Duke. Yeah. You're probably not going to be a greeter at Walmart. Not there's there's anything wrong with that, but yeah. like these guys all had bright futures. Their names are sullied. They were fucking thrown into the fire, and then whoops, our bad. But again, you like, never hear that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back yeah, in the exactly. tube at that point. You exactly. Know? Yeah. So anyway, that's my whole fucking take on it. It's just like if it's fucked, if it's happened, if that happened, then that's super fucked up. And obviously nobody can condone that. But I just feel like we should fucking, you know, it's innocent until proven guilty. That's the fucking how we are. And we need to like, let's get some actual facts and like find out what really happened here. Did some person just have one bad experience or did some person just fucking make up some shit on Reddit? Like they did for fucking Maynard a couple of years ago and everybody was ready to lynch him immediately, you know? So like, yeah. it's just, you know, I don't know. That's my take. Ramstein's choice. But, uh, you know, I, I would hate the fact if that was what's really going on at their it, shows. It's a tough deal, man. And, and being, you know, celebrities as we now are and always in the spotlight, always, you know, yeah. constantly in the forefront of Dude, the minds of the public via yeah. this podcast. Like, I'm getting yeah. especially sensitive to it, yeah. you know. like the, I got to go two towns over just to jerk off. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> That, that's a Theo Vaughn joke. <laughs> I'm also upset because I just saw Ramstein recently and I didn't get to bang anybody. <laughs> you, know, you know, I want that keyboard as the skinny dude. 
you know what, what was the deal with that backstage pass year yeah. you're, you're flying that thing I'm pretty proud they did yeah, indeed. you're walking think, a little think, walking a little bow like it after you got back from the concert if I remember correctly. Brian Posehn like till hammer bro <laughs> you guys know Brian Posehn yeah. Brian Posehn's he, fucking yeah. hilarious he's, I think he summed that up pretty well on his first album was it Live in Nerd Rage where he's like he's he's a teenager he goes to see Wasp He's all fucking hyped to go try and interview Wasp, and he goes up to he goes up to Blackie. He's like, "Hey, Blackie!" And Blackie looks at him, and goes, "Grow a pair of tits." <laughs> Indeed. Speaking Indeed. of uh, the years not being kind to someone, back to the uh, Juliet Lewis conversation earlier. Brian Pussain, yeah. you ever see pictures of like 24 year old Brian Pussain? Just a huge, strapping, good looking no, man. Was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. It's a like real shock. He looked really nerdy, though. Like, yeah. I mean, think about news radio. He was, because he was like the mailroom guy. On oh, God radio. Damn, that's I hilarious. He's on yeah. that show. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's always looked really weird. But yeah, he, I mean, Go he's Go back a to big early dude. Brian Pussain. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a stunning turn of unfortunate events for that, uh, that poor gentleman. <laughs> that's super fucking funny. The last thing I want to fucking could talk about guys and uh i think maybe you'll have an opinion on this are you guys following this shit of the fucking golf pga and the fucking liv saudi arabia fucking thing combining a buddy was telling me about it just heard you about know, that on thursday that at golf league as a matter okay fact. i thought yeah, maybe i thought maybe you'd have a hot i've, I've take got on cursory this, so. details but go All ahead right. no i mean that's i don't got a lot on it maybe we can talk about it more next week or something but are you following this at all no. Okay, so there's the Saudi Arabia Golf League, right? About a year ago, all these dudes quit the PGA Tour to go play over there because they're paying them ungodly amounts of money and shit. And, of course, Saudi Arabia having, you know, issues of, you know, beheading women and such. You know, it's, it's a very controversial thing. There's this big pissing match between the PGA and whatever the fuck. I think it's called LIV or something like yeah, that. Yeah, the Live Tour, yeah. Yeah, this fucking other Saudi Arabia Tour. Bunch of people leave the PGA Tour, burn bridges. I mean, it's a yeah. big deal. Like, you're never allowed to play PGA events again, et cetera, et cetera. Big names. Phil Mickelson, who obviously is, you know, on his, uh, you know, he's older dude on Dustin Johnson, who I think was ranked number one in the yeah, world, they're close. Huge to it players when he went over you know? there. Yeah, massive, massive players. Other yeah. people on the PGA Tour, Tiger Woods, and uh, what's his name, McKill, McKill, Rory McIlroy, McIlroy, yeah, defending it, you know, to the fucking no end and shit. It's a big deal, right? It's been going on for like a year. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, like like the president of like the PGA Tour, like didn't even know until like the hour before it was announced. They fucking announce that the two tours are combining now. Yeah, so, I yeah. mean, we're talking we're talking not only a war of words <laughs> and shit, but legit litigation and all this shit like against. And all of a sudden they're just like, yeah, we're just going to combine forces and just do the whole thing yeah. ourselves. Well, I mean, the alternative is to get 9-11. <laughs> pretty much pretty much yeah yeah Whoa, harsh it's it's pretty wild in that in that area so everybody's like all these defenders are just like fucking like i can't believe this and like it's it's just a lot obviously there's all these human rights issues over there and shit and then they have just bottomless pockets over there yeah it's, i don't know proponents are saying like well this is kind of going to happen anyway so at least this gives us a chance to be like the governing body and at least control yeah. how this happens uh but a lot of other people are saying that all this litigation between the two was exposing gonna expose all a lot of dark shit in Probably. both camps <laughs> and they were both like sure, they sure. were both kind of like eh, this may not oh, be the route man. either, either uh, any of us want to go to wow i hadn't so, heard that last part yeah so it, i don't it's know it's kind of the definition of a like money talks type bullshit scenario oh, yeah, right yeah, and yeah. so the big difference between the two obviously to your point they've got saudi oil money they were pre-playing payers to come and play on their tour. So PGA, yes. obviously you've got your sponsorships, all of that stuff. But that aside, you nobody's win. paid a fee to play on that tour, right? If you win, you're paid. If you don't win, you're not. The live tour, it was here is $100 million. Like here's an yep. absurd bag of money. Come play for our tour. We want to get the names, get the cachet, all of that stuff all good and of course pga throws a fit to your point under the guise of human rights blah 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 up on their pedestal which to be clear was never anything more than you are stealing our biggest our names which is yeah. going to put a dent in our pocketbook by proxy of doing so 
we're going to make it evil, etc. So to do this total turnstile, turncoat thing, like, you know, hand in hand, arms raised yeah. together <laughs> yeah. is a, a, an essentially douchey kind of like backtracking on things right oh, off yeah. the bat. yeah, that's, that's the whole thing, dude. And yeah. I, I did not, like I said, I heard about this third hand somehow, and I'd never considered the aspect of the big dark secrets, which I want to know what secrets PGA it, right? has like, in their yeah. closet. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I bet they do. I don't know. And that was just somebody again, speculating, you know, I think that was the same person that, Threw out those allegations against Ramstein. Actually, threw that out as well. <laughs> a three hundred pound John Daly with a mullet and smoking a dart at the same time, pulling off threesomes and all kinds yeah. of shady oh, shit. Yeah, Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer didn't didn't invent the Arnold Palmer. It was Dude. some other guy. Dude. Some other guy put it. But when you think about it, man, it's all it's all stars and cachet, and like it's it's kind of a funny sounding thing because golf is like this, admittedly and inherently boring nerdy kind <laughs> yeah, of you yeah, know yeah. short yeah, shorts golf. goofy shirts but thing. it's big money but like big yeah. money there's and money aside like the the women aspect and like all of that stuff there's going to be shady happenings in anything with big powerful people right yeah. that's yeah. Well, i mean most a, a of those country of clubs goes, are, right? yeah. are whites only and shit like that oh yeah dude you know we've yeah, all seen I mean, caddyshack Aug- <laughs> augusta national which is where the masters is played obviously yeah. was famously a white only club until i uh, don't quote me yeah, on the year the but like literally until no like 10 years ago oh now. really Jesus. yeah uh yeah. condoleezza rice was the person she was i believe the first black <laughs> black oh person God. she ain't even That's black right. to get to <laughs> play that fucking <laughs> course you know like how crazy is that we're talking like 10 years ago man it's fucking out that of is wild yeah, i did not know that so when you've Jesus. got big power well, tiger people, woods yeah. dominated the masters many times <laughs> well yeah i, I know i not, know that's yeah, not being not, the same not as professional goal. players obviously yeah. like yeah but crazy man yeah the world dude. of golf the world of sports was rocked by this though it, it really is a a big <laughs> like what the fuck moment in, yeah, in the yeah, world yeah. of sports though like holy shit because it came like the, it just happened nobody yeah. knew like it was like super secretive apparently and like every like certain key people were phoned like at 6 30 <laughs> in the morning like an hour before it was announced like hey just so you know, and like, like the, like I'm saying, like literally like the president of the tour or whatever, yeah. you know, like guys who actually like run the day to day shit and stuff. We're like, Hey, this is going to happen. <laughs> Which is <laughs> also crazy to think about because you always hear, you know, the, these people and they make all the decisions, like all of the, this shady shit in the government. Right. Which is where all that stuff comes up. Right. It's, you know, this crazy body of people working behind the scenes, pulling the strings, puppet masters, all that stuff which is expected and understood in politics, but something like golf, like if the fucking <laughs> main dude that runs the PGA doesn't know about this until minutes before it's happening, yeah, like man. The, you know who what is happened. making these fucking decisions? The, and the like, president of the PGA, he got an envelope, he opened it up as all the articles about that Jamal Khashoggi journalist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Remember this? Dude, <laughs> dude, no, dude, the fucking onion, the onion has been on fire about this shit, dude. The onion did some shit about oh, the yeah, fucking... Uh, the new uh, Jamal Khashoggi was a bad actor <laughs> tour, golf tour and shit. They did some shit about fucking uh, uh, guys on the tour have to are forced to putt around woman being beheaded on oh the green. Oh Dude, the, the onion is on fire about this shit, man. It's really so having funny. a field day <laughs> for <this>. real. <laughs> Damn, dude. out of control. It really is out of control. We'll look a little more into that, but that was a big news. I'm not a big sports guy, obviously, but that was just so crazy. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so. for sure. All right, boys. What do you think? We're probably about to wrap this shit up. Get to be about that time. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty hammered. Not going to lie. Thanks for coming out, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. It's a good time. All right, bitches. Kiss the rings. We're out. Peace. Peace.